Next, we will have House File 4904 with Representative Greenman. Um, it is my understanding that you wish to have this bill laid over. Yes, Madam Chair. All right, thank you. And I will move that House File 4904 be before the committee. And if you'd please talk to us, uh, it has an A1 amendment, correct? Yes, Madam right. Chair. Let's get the bill in the order that you would like. All those in favor of the adoption of the A1, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The A1 is adopted and House File 4904 is amended. Please to your bill as amended. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Chair, and I hope this is a, this is a simple bill, um, so we should have enough time. Um, it allows statutory cities to adopt ward-based elections by ordinance uh, submitted to the voters um, or by a 15% of voters petition um, to put it on the ballot, and then it's passed on the ballot. This bill arose out of conversations with local jurisdictions as I've been working on the uh, codifying and strengthening the protections of the Voting Rights Act into Minnesota law. As you may know, um, um, and if you've been in other committees, uh, the Voting Rights Act exists to ensure that all voters are able to cast a ballot and participate equally in our uh, democratic process. There are two main protections, protections against vote denial and vote dilution that we're working on. Um, and this bill addresses one of those. Um, it addresses the issue of vote dilution. And in sum, what that means is if you have an election system that has the effect of impairing voters of color or language minority voters, um, if, it, if it impairs their equal opportunity to elect candidates their choice. Um, this means that candidates, uh, or excuse me, that voters of color um, can cast a ballot, but their votes won't have equal power uh, to elect can uh, the candidates. This can, uh, uh, as we have seen in the last 60 years, this can result um, either from at-large elections or uh, districted elections that, that have unfair maps. Um, and in systems of at-large elections, it will take uh, racially polarized voting um, where minorities could be shut out of electing a candidate of their choice. Um, that's why, where this bill came from. Um, I've been working on this bill for a while, um, and one of the things as we were talking about it is in Minnesota, statutory cities actually can't uh, take matters into their own hands and move to a, um, a ward election. State law is a, bar is a barrier right now, um, and so what we're doing here, it's a, it, again, it's a simple bill. Uh, working with the, the statutes that it exists um, allows a, a city council to go on the ballot um, and with, with both the um, the boundaries and the question of moving toward elections, um, or um, if 15% uh, of voters want to petition. Um, this is permissive language. It doesn't require cities to do anything, but it does give them the authority, um, and it borrows the redistricting uh, provisions currently in law um, for uh, charter cities. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Greenman. Uh, we have one testifier listed for this bill. Alex Hassel with the League of Minnesota Cities. If you'll state your name for the record and begin your testimony, please. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. My name is Alex Hassel, and I'm here on behalf of the League of Minnesota Cities. Uh, the League does not have a formal position on this legislation, but we did want to provide some brief comments as this would be providing an authority for uh, statutory cities that they didn't have before to bring a ballot question to their voters to establish a ward-based council. Statutory cities, which make up the majority of cities, are all comprised of at-large councils, and only charter cities have the ability to establish ward-based councils. Uh, and just for your awareness, there are 107 charter cities in Minnesota, 76 of which uh, are ward-based city councils. Currently, unless a statutory city were to take the steps to become a full charter-based uh, city, which is an extensive and, and lengthy process to change their uh, governance structure, they would not be able to establish wards. There is a process in this bill that would allow 15% of electors voting at the last city election to bring this uh, to voters as a whole as a ballot question. Uh, currently, there's a process in which 15% of voters from the last election can petition district court to trigger uh, the process to become a charter city. So uh, we see this as fairly consistent with that statute, but again, would allow wards without establishing a full charter commission, which may be the preference of some cities. So um, I'll stop there and just thank Representative Greenman for working with us uh, and hearing our feedback. Thank you very much. We appreciate your being here, and always we appreciate your testimony. All right. Um, anyone else from the public wishing to testify? We'll move to member questions. Representative Joy. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Representative Greenman, and, and I agree with this. You know, I'm a small city and we don't have wards, but to get, give it back to local control is always in my favor, so thank you. Representative Kosnick. 
Uh, thank you. I appreciated the previous testimony explaining the 15% that that's apparently kind of consistent with uh, some other, um, I was wondering how you picked that. There is no simple bill, but um, just kind of in your testimony or support of what you're proposing here, uh, suggesting that minorities may not feel like they have a voice, um, how does, clarify for me how establishing a ward would do that. <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, uh, Representative Kosnick. Um, and so in this, in, in, um, in federal voting rights law and what we want to codify into Minnesota law, if you um, have a system of an election, um, let's say you have an at-large election and you have racially polarized voting, so the majority of voters all vote for one, one candidate and a minority of voters always vote for another, right? It's not about party, it's about uh, consistent over time and when you look at these cases they are usually look over 10 elections um, and sort of do statistical analysis in those cases what it means is you could have you could be in a minority population or community that uh, has 40 percent of the votes but never can elect a candidate of their choice because they're election elected at large and so one of the ways that I think we've seen over time is moving toward elections means that uh, you have smaller you, you have you know, if you have five wards, that gives a smaller uh, set of communities the ability to elect someone, as opposed to requiring the entire city uh, um, to all vote for those elected. So, um, if that makes sense. Yep. This bill is being laid over. We have two member, two more members with questions, and then I don't know if Lead Nash wants to close. So, be very yep. short, please. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair, Representative Greenman. I appreciate that response. It's uh, helpful. Um, I think where I struggle a little bit, and, and I understand your logic. Uh, but where I struggle, and I hear this from time and time again, is that the, the idea that all minorities are voting the same, and that could be, you know, I take strong opposition to that. Not all minorities vote one way, and to insinuate that it just is wrong. We do not have myopic voting. We have different of opinions. Uh, and we also live in a variety of different areas. Uh, I get it that in some cities they may be more concentrated, but um, I think I would be very, I proceed very cautiously to say that all minorities are voting the same way. Representative Kosnick, Representative Freiberg. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for bringing this, Representative Greenman. Um, I know the genesis of this bill is kind of addressing an issue in the Voting Rights Act um, and to make it consistent, but. Uh, I just wanted to say, kind of even in the abstract, I think this is a, a good bill. I ran for, I ran three times for the city council in Golden Valley, which is a statutory city which has at-large elections. Um, and uh, Golden Valley is not a huge city, but that's just a lot of territory to cover. So um, I, this, I'd actually like to see us move more in this direction. So I think this is, you know, even setting aside the issue with the Voting Rights Act, I think this is a good policy change that can bring elections closer and more localized to the people who know the issue the most, kind of consistent with what Representative Joy said. So thank you for doing this. Thank you. Representative Nadeau. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Greenman. In line 1.10. Uh, we have one the, minute remaining of committee time. <laughs> Be really quick. Well, I, I get it, but yeah. I think, mm -hmm. I don't think this bill is as simple as everybody it's, says. We're being late. It's being laid over, so you have plenty of time to discuss it. Okay. 1.10. Um, where you add and ward boundary changes. Is this, I mean, it doesn't appear to be optional. I mean, in, in the language it says, the ordinance shall include a schedule of elections and terms and ward boundary changes if applicable. So, go ahead. Uh, Madam Chair, I, uh, one, I don't think that's what that language is, but we, are, we actually adopted an amendment um, that um, revised the process, so that's why I was confused by... Um, it, the language says a city may adopt an ordinance to elect its city council members by ward in the following circumstances. Um, and would you please state which lines you're referencing? Uh, the, it, on the um, A1 amendment, which we adopted, it is lines 1.5, uh, subdivision 7. Yep, and I see that. Th Madam Chair. Please, Representative Nadeau, and we are going to recess in just I'll, one minute. I'll talk to Representative yeah. Greenman. Thank you, Madam Thank Chair. Thank you so much. Lead Nash, please. Nothing support. further. You can just be done and we don't have to recess. Thank you very much. Uh, Representative Greenman, if you'll close up and we'll just lay your bill over.
Thank, thank you, Madam Chair, and I appreciate the conversation. I look forward to, to more conversations. Um, and uh, just to be clear, um, when something violates the Voting Rights Act, it is shown uh, in statute. It's not assumptions about how people are voting. It's, it's not in statute. It's shown by experts. But um, to Representative Freiburg's point, this is just a good law. Um, statutory cities who want to change uh, their uh, method of elections in order to be more representative uh, shouldn't have to wait until they get sued or shouldn't have to uh, become charter cities. This allows them to do that with a process that generally reflects state law. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Greenman, and I appreciate your expedience in getting through this bill. And thank you for making changes that make me more comfortable with it as well. I appreciate it. And with that, members, we are adjourned.